As such then, I do not assess the reflections. I don't put a mark or score next to any of the above. I don't assess the in-class work. Um, that would be particularly inappropriate, I think. It's, it kind of cuts across the grain of giving people the openness and the flexibility to explore their own experience of whatever situation that they're in. I do not formally assess my students' reflections through writing. It's an ongoing conversation that changes over the course of the semester and allows me to really gauge how much they've taken on board the ideas and the concepts. And this, I think, really gives them the opportunity to engage someone else in this conversation and to really feel that their thoughts are important and it's not a simple matter of regurgitating something that is told to you from, from higher up, but to question and to learn in a more synthetic manner. I, I also feel that's much more effective than asking them to write a formal essay. Students tend to really try and give you the answer that you're looking for rather than uh, their own thoughts and feelings. Um, they feel like they're forced to be philosophers and they feel sort of uncomfortable sort of expressing it in some way that might then be critically examined. So I think that reflection allows a student to have a healthy bit of skepticism about what they're being told and about the way the world works and allows them to examine the biases that they have in their own personal life um, and also that exist within the field and some you see barriers to new ways of thinking and new ideas in every field and, and science is no different so I think it really sort of opens their eyes to the concept that they can make a difference and that their contribution is important uh, and that it allows them to that they're allowed to think outside the box and very much encouraged to be creative in their reflective processes and uh, to bring forward, again, new ideas and, and to try and express those. And I think that's really the important part is encouraging these students to express these ideas. Um, and I think that sometimes they feel afraid when they're going to be graded because they want to express only the right idea as opposed to just their idea. It's also anonymous, so we don't even know who actually uh, reflected as such, uh, which means students can be very, very honest. They can be honest to themselves, they can be very honest to the university, to us. I mean, eventually we're going to see the, the, the feedback. And as such, I think it provides input, valuable input for the students themselves, for myself as an academic. So it's not just, okay, well, here are all the forms, let's let's put them on archive and that's done deal. No, not at all. In actual fact, we read the comments mm -hmm. and we're, we're incorporating what, they had, what the students had to say for, for the semesters to come. So improvement at all levels. Improvements for the students in their learning, in their research, in their uh, teamwork. Improvement at our level, making the course better, making the assessments more effective. Uh, structuring the course in a way that students really like the course really at the end of the day. And last but not least, Marina Harvey and I were also working on a research project. So we don't want to just have that knowledge for ourselves, that wouldn't be quite right. We also want to share it with the wider community. So we're, we're publishing our uh, findings in academic journals and share the findings at the academic conferences. So at the end of the day, hopefully on a small level, we all benefit from the project. I am a firm believer that diaries should never be submitted for assessment, that they are private reflections, but we can ask for something like a meta um, synthesis of student reflection if we want to look at assessing reflection, or particularly reflection that is summarised as what have I learnt from this experience, student learning and how it links to the learning outcomes for that particular unit of study. In an ideal world I wouldn't assess reflections at all. I personally would, would prefer to have teaching that's focused formatively rather than summatively as they say in the teaching language. And the, I mean, to, t to say something fundamental about that, in an academic environment, you're looking for performance within a particular time period. In a professional environment, you really want people to develop over time. And I've managed um, environmental professionals over a good, goodly number of years. And I've been happy enough to take, somebody who might take 12 months to develop or six months. Now, as a, as a manager, yeah, there's a bit of a cost if it takes 12 months rather than six months to develop a skill. But, um, uh, that's not that critical. I mean, you know, you expect to have to work with people to develop at their own pace. Academia doesn't align very well with that and I find that tension awkward 
and um, I would much rather be able to have an academic process where people learn at their own pace. Um, but there are other contexts around the university which don't align with that. I mean, students want grades and they want marks and they, well, they want to come out the end with a ticket. Uh, not an unimportant part of the um, agenda. So you've got to do work that's got that assessment component in it. In general, I don't mark for content because that doesn't seem appropriate. I do mark for process. So I'm looking for the kind of inquiry into their own practice that they're doing. Uh, I'm looking for something about the sensitivity of their articulation of their experience those kinds of things. So it's not that different from marking an English essay actually, um, but uh, it's, um, yeah, so you can do something there which I think is okay, is livable.